Hey, what's up? That's me, Ned. And welcome to the Bubba the Love Sponge wedding special. And there's the lovely couple, Bubba and Heather. And there's Hogan at the wedding. Big shock there. Even that jackass Ronnie the limo driver came. What, he fly the fucking plane down? There's Hogan and his family. Oh, God! What kind of bullshit music is this? Jesus Christ, this ain't the fucking Academy Awards. It's a wedding between a chubby hillbilly and a hot chick with a big rack. What a farce. All right, let's get into this bullshit. So Howard and his fiance Beth decided that for Christmas, they would give the gift of flight. So Howard gathered his main crew, even Benji, and headed on down to beautiful Tampa, Florida. Here's the deal. I'm standing in front of the plane. It is seven minutes to one o'clock. Everybody is on the plane except for guess who? Benji and his girlfriend. So of course, the last guy to be invited is holding up the plane. I know Howard uh, pretty well, and I'm gonna say by 103, with or without Benji, this plane is taken off. I thought the airport was just like one little shack, and that was a whole airport. I didn't realize there was a lots of different terminals. Um, so it was a huge mistake. It w I, I really fucked up. I got to the airport on time, but I, I was dropped off by a cab at a terminal, it wasn't our terminal. So he calls me at like five of one, and he said, where are you? And I said, we're on the plane. And he goes, well, I'm at the airport. And it turned out that he was like four airports away, you know, just right down the block. So I told him where we were, and literally I saw him and Sheila running on the tarmac onto the plane. I was shocked. All I right. thought it'd be much later. Or actually, I thought we'd be looking at a couple of empty seats. No way, they're going to have to sit in the crappy seats. Last come, last serve. Now, do you think he's going to scream when he gets on his plane or something? <laughs> Welcome, Benji. Hey, there you go. Hey, Sheila. Hey, Sheila. My girlfriend's name is Sheila. If you combined Mother Teresa, Stephen Hawking, and Audrey Hepburn, that's my girlfriend. And I love her. She's such a sweet, she's just so nice to me. She has such a heart, and I, and I love her so much. All right, we get it. You're in love. Fucking queer. Now, what's a real man like Artie Lang think about riding in a private jet? When I heard about the private jet, my reaction was, uh, God, I hope I don't have to shit on the jet. Because if you shit on a private jet, I've done this before, you alienate everyone there, and they won't be your friends anymore. Or they won't look at you the same way anymore. I shit once on uh, Quincy Jones' private jet, and uh, right afterwards, I was fired from Mad TV. So uh, I just tried to hold in an enormous shit the entire time, and that's so uh, stressful. I'd rather fly pub, uh, you know, uh, I'd rather fly commercial because of that. All right, we're on the plane. Hey guys. Hey man. Hello, Mr. Sabian. Okay, we're working down. This is our beautiful plane. You can sort of see, and I'm coming down. Oh. Okay. Hey guys. Oh. Hi everybody. Mary, I can't even see you because. Oh, there you go. It gets dark because you're in there. So we're getting our lunch right now. We're just talking about bone density. What about it? I did not have 57. I had about eight. I wanted to. I wanted you to hear that on the camera. Okay, and here's. Mary, you had 57. I had I had eight pieces of Reese's peanut butter cup. What I you, heard him say, "Who put the peanut butter cup?" <laughs> now, Rob, what are you watching? I am watching the first season of Mission Impossible. The first? Oh God! And his, <laughs> and boss is doing his thing, and there's. I'm. Uh, Oh my goodness. I'm, uh, analyzing a chess game. Oh. So you're not playing, just analyzing. I'm analyzing. All right. I played a guy the other day. I want to see what the computer thinks in my game. And what are you, what are you eating? Chicken and vegetables. Excellent. How many pieces of chocolate did you have? I had eight peanut butter cups. I've had an addiction to chocolate since the day I was born, and people like watching me eat it because I can't stop eating it. It's just funny when Gary loves anything to eat because of his big teeth, you know, watching him munch on things, you know. When those teeth get to work on a piece of chocolate, it's like watching an incredible machine. Now, while Gary and the gang heads on into Tampa, some of the other Stern Show staffers have already landed. Let's go see what those assholes are up to. So, girls, uh, I understand you two just made out on the plane. How was that? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you starting to right? It's all over. This weekend's ruined. <laughs> Finished kaput. What an asshole. And look what we have here. Looks like Richard Christie got in last night and he's drunk off his ass. 
This should be interesting. I, I get really wasted drunk when I fly because I hate to fly. Get on the train. Well, we're back at the airport on Sunday. Do you want to hang out on Sunday? No, I'm off on Sunday. Oh, you're not working there no. Sunday? No, I'm off Sunday, Monday. Oh, because we'd love to see you Sunday. Yeah, do you have a car? Yeah. Get on your car. I have a car. I'll give you my car. Sleep it off, Richard. Oh, not this guy again. So we're back with Sal and his wife, Christine. I'd like to get a piece of that. His wife's hot, too. <laughs> this is my wife. This is my wife. This is the only the airport. Oh, you're my hot, sexy wife, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Come on, let's make out. I ran out of the airport, and there was this really sexy lady with, with huge, huge tits, you know? It was sort of like a white robin quivers. And I don't know what happened. I just like, I just something in me made me just run over to her and give her a hug. And I asked her if she wanted to come in the limo. And, you know, I had people take pictures with us. She was really a lot of fun. I have no freaking idea why I did it, but I did. Enough for this asshole. Move on. Let's head over to the hotel and check out what Artie, Ronnie, and Richard are up to. So Artie had this idea to go ride jet skis, and I was like, you know what? It'd be funny to see if the jet ski even holds him up. Whose idea was it to go rent jet skis? I believe that was my idea right after I had taken a Laura tab and smoked a joint. You're getting us a wave runner! God damn it! Cecil be the moron's getting another angle. <laughs> Look at him. He, he doesn't know chubby. what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> you kidding me? My job was to film the guys on the jet skis uh, as they were taking off, and then eventually I would get on a jet ski and go for a ride. Damn. Yo! Come on. I gotta film this uh, glorious occasion. Uh, this ain't gonna fit. This ain't fair. Oh, it's a pink one. They already got a pink one. That was right. It kind of pink. This ain't fair. Let's open the strap up on Can you give it two of them? This is left over from when Jackie Gleason lived in Florida. Oh my god. It'll go. Just get one snap to be all right. How's that gonna happen? <laughs> Life vest, uh, well, it's embarrassing. The life vest didn't quite fit around me. Uh, well, one clip did, so I was able to get one clip around me. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 you can't do this anymore. <laughs> I was, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> You're going to, right? All right. We're in position three yeah, now. Phone here, you get <laughs> I'm kind of an idiot, and I'm from Kansas. I don't really know any better. I, I put my camera, I had it in a plastic sandwich bag to it with a hole in it just in case I dropped it, but then I didn't realize, well, the plastic sandwich bag isn't going to help much if the camera falls in the freaking water because it has a hole in it. Wish us luck. Let's go. Balance, hard to port. Hard to starboard. Uh, that's the Howard Stern show. A fan at the hey. pool sent me cannoli. See, Artie Lang from a fan. Look at this. Just before a nice wave runner outing. My goodness. <laughs> that's a Schwiedel. I think you should take, put a cannoli in a hand as you go out. There. That looks like a cheeseburger wrapped in a ganoul. I thought it was really gay. Uh, it, it, it was just, it was fun to watch Artie, you know, who's a big guy on this jet ski, and then uh, Richard behind him, grabbing him. Well, clearly, I can afford to ride it by myself. I make, I make six figures a quarter, and uh, you know, that's just, uh, that's just on my stock portfolio alone. I could clearly ride, or I could buy. A, let's face it, I could buy a jet ski. 
<laughs> and uh, a Mexican to clean it. I can buy both of those things. I thought, I, I said, you know, I don't know Richard that well, and I want to bond with him. So, uh, and he's one of the guys in the lower tier of the show. He's a low-level guy here. And I said, look, I'm a high-level guy. Come with me. And it was me being a nice guy, and it bit me in the ass. Geez, enough with the goddamn jet ski. It looks like Sal the stockbroker and Doug Goodstein just arrived at Bubba's studio. Let's head over there and see what's popping, yo. Who wrote this shit? Oh, man, let me tell you about Bubba's studio. It is like Disneyland for creeps. It, it's like a place where, like, rapists would go to bury bodies. It's secluded. From the outside, it looks just like a normal home. But in the inside, man, it's like the fucking Batcave. It's amazing. It's the Batcave with dildos, torture racks, alcohol. I was in paradise. Howard TV, welcome to the Denison, the Bubba world. Let me give you a quick little draw. I'm getting ready to go on the air, so let me give you a quick one, a quickie. A little entrance deal. We'll pay some homage to the man. This is my office. This is the studio. We got uh, Miller Lite with beer machine. This is the infamous Alaska powder coat and torture rack with an array of dildos. Howard Fisk right here, that's very important. Brent, Manson, Ned, Spice Boy. This is where I sit. I've been having some issues with my legs lately. I got my nice little... <laughs> This is the uh, fraternity type living room. Big screen TV, black leather couches. This is uh, this is the kitchen. This is the green room. It's all mic'd up and a shower uh, that's secretly camered up as well. We're gonna um, I'm gonna see if I can get Sal and Richard in there today. The first, I think it may be the first time they've ever taken a shower on air before. This is uh, the merchandising area. I catch a lot of shit because I like to sling some merch every once in a while. That's how us hillbillies do it. Yeah, when you get on Manson, my, my crown jewel, my uh, favorite. And finally, I want to end it with. It looks all polished and refined in the front part and what have not, and the studio looks decent. But let me show you how those rednecks really do with storage units. That's where everybody smokes. Nice. Look, oh, look, look, look at this. Trees, oh, shit. birds. birds. <laughs> Semi-storage units. What's in here? Crick. So they ask us, why do you want, why, why don't you go to New York? Fuck, why would you go to New York when you have this? Yeah, man. Uh-oh, looks like Hamill Goodstein is up to something. We'll come back and check on him later. But for now, let's go check in with Artie and the boys and see what the fuck they're doing. We're off to Bubba's studio. Me, Mutt, Tim Sabian, Steve Langford, Artie Lang, and Ronnie Munn. Can I ask you to turn that down? Because I got to like this all the time. I got to feed a report. Can I ask you to turn this up? Yes, Steve Langford, I'm a reporter for Howard 100 News. Steve Langford is just a great guy. He's a hardworking guy. Uh, he's uh, very dedicated to his craft he's a very creative guy and he's there to get the story and uh, when you're out on business with Steve Langford there's no fooling around it's Steve Langford and he's got his nose for news on and that's all he's focused my idea about covering what was going on in Tampa was to cover anything and everything that happened a beautiful day on the beach the west coast of Florida 80 degrees and sunny Howard Stern and the whole gang Rectal itch! <laughs> Rectal itch! It's a stupid idea to begin with. But, you know, I was on deadline. And I had to get these stories back to New York uh, so they could run on Howard 100 News. Steve Langford was so excited because he had all these exclusive news reports that he was calling into Shuley with while we were in the SUV. So we decided to fuck with him a little bit. I started tickling his ear, Ronnie and and Artie were yelling out various curse words, and uh, we, you know, we tried to screw him up, but in true newsman fashion, he persevered and, and got right through it. I gotta give it to you, Steve. A Same. room next to an elevator that made so much noise, he and girlfriend Beth didn't get much sleep at all. They have since changed rooms. Today, Howard's birthday. Tonight, a birthday dinner for Howard, put on by Beth. I'm Steve Black. <laughs> now, I was being tickled.